that want nada. Okay, uh, hello everyone. Uh, today it's our pleasure to welcome Yasunori Nomura from Berkeley, and he will talk about holography for general space times. So please uh, go ahead. Okay, all right. Thank you very much for the invitation. Um, this is kind of the first time for me to give this kind of virtual seminar. So I don't know how it goes, but hopefully I can manage the talk. And yes, I'm talking about some uh, a work on the holography, which we've been doing for general space times. And as far as I understand, like uh, uh, audience uh, is kind of expert. I also checked. Uh, uh, so I, it kind of initially, I just quickly go to the stuff. So if it's a bit too quick, uh, please ask me a question anytime. So uh, I guess you can do it by right, turning on the microphone. So that would be great. So, all right. So holography, we think it's a key to understand uh, quantum gravity, uh, where a uh, vast Hilbert space of the quantum field theory, like eight degrees, eight degrees of freedom at, uh, uh, at each point in space time is kind of illusion. The two degrees of freedom is much, much, much smaller, uh, scaling like area rather than volume. Okay? Um, and you can formulate this uh, rather precisely in a sense that uh, if you think about any co dimension to surface where it's a P in, in the bottom, and, and then if you send in light rays from this P, um, the entropy on this light C, it's called light C, is bounded by the area of this B in general space time. Okay? So not just a black hole, and we can generalize that to a uh, uh, more general uh, space time structure. And as we know, ADS-CFT is an example of a manifestation of this uh, phenomenon, holography. But we should also uh, remember, and we learned a lot of, uh, through ADS-CFT, precise relation and stuff, but we should at the same time remember that holography, we believe, is more general. Okay? And ADS-CFT seems to be an example, or we want that. that. Otherwise, uh, we can't apply to our own universe and so on. So uh, the strategy uh, I take today to address this question of generalizing uh, holography uh, to, uh, to more general space time, uh, in, you know, in the philosophy, uh, under the philosophy of bottom-up type, is that we take a key hypothesis, okay? some key hypothesis, and then you, you derive the consequence, and then come up with the theory, and then you really test with the experiment. Yeah, that's what happened in the history of physics. So every, every time it's like that, Planck, yes, this is the Planck Institute, and Planck just postulated this energy uh, discreteness hypothesis, and then just compute and compare with the spectrum, and, and the black body spectrum, it agreed. But here, of course, we don't have direct experiment, like uh, all days uh, developing quantum mechanics. So, but approach I claim or I follow is a similar, okay, the same. But now we can use a general relativity as an quote unquote experiment. We can have a key hypothesis and derive a certain statement and check whether that's consistent with what we already know, which is indirectly we learn from experiment or measurement from nature. To do this, uh, uh, the first thing we have to figure out is. Okay, we learned a lot from ADS CFT, but which features of that is more general than ADS CFT in applied more generally? But which features are specific to ADS CFT? Some features seem to be specific, right? Just it's specific to this particular system of antidote asymptotic antidote space. Okay? So this is the place we make a hypothesis and then study the consequence whether that view is reasonable or not. And then, of course, we want to go to the next stage afterwards right, to really developing that theory. So, so um, the key element I take to be more general, I claim to be more general things that we learn from ADS safety is a relation between a semi classical bulk geometry and the quantum information quantities, in particular quantum entanglement on the boundary theory. In the case of ADS CFT, it's a CFT, yeah, boundary conformal theory. In particular, I uh, must well use this HRT, uh, Fulvini, Ramani, Takayanagi formula, started by Gould and Takayanagi. And if you, if you take this boundary, and if you take a subregion A here, okay, and then entanglement entropy or von Riemann entropy of this region A in the boundary theory is given by the area of uh, this minimal surface gamma A, okay, that's a minimal surface, minimizing the surface whose boundary is anchored to the boundary of A. Okay? 
And in fact, in the dynamical space time, it's not minimal, uh, a minimal surface, but it's extreme surface. You have to extremize and minimize in the space direction and maximize in the time direction. So you have to uh, use an extreme surface. And the area of that over four times two newtons, so in the unit of uh, uh, Planck, it's so one quarter of the area, plus some uh, the one side of the bulk, of Neumann entropy, is actually equal to the boundary theory uh, entanglement entropy in, in the subregion A. Okay? So, um, and that's the key thing we assume to be more general. And there is a bunch of heat, by the way, if you walk on a tensor network, and I know some of you, and the distant region is, uh, relation is much more general, you already see it. So we take this to be a real uh, general hypothesis and then see what kind of framework you can develop. Yeah, that's what I'm doing today. And you, we see that that will lead to quite elegant picture for the general structure of quantum gravity in general space time. And we see even some new covariant geometric object, which we call the holographic slices, and so on. Okay, so some stuff that people confuse or the internal shadow and so on, things can be reasonably gratified. And, and this uh, work is based on, uh, this talk is based on the work written here, in particular these last two papers with my uh, current student, uh, Pratik Rath and uh, Nico Sarzera, that's the main content for the paper. And, and the other thing I also mentioned uh, in passing. Uh, and I understand this, Pratik gave Rath gave a talk in this uh, series a couple of weeks ago or maybe a month ago, but uh, he seems to have enjoyed. Hopefully I can do as good as him. So, <laughs> okay. Any question at this point? No. Okay. All right, so this is the content and the introduction I already did it. And then now I talk about the holography for general space time more explicitly what we, we uh, I'm, I'm talking about. And basically, uh, a lot of these chapters correspond to the papers I, I recorded. The first part is roughly like this paper, and, and the second part is roughly these like the papers. And these two uh, uh, last sections are the like latest one. Okay? But uh, not, not precise one to one correspondence, but it's roughly like that. And hopefully, I have time to go through everything. Okay, but to generalize ADS CFT, many you say okay, boundary quantity, boundary quantum information quantity is related with the holographic bulk. Then what's the boundary? Yeah, that's something you have to really fix to go beyond ADS CFT. ADS certainly has a natural boundary, which is a conformal boundary at infinity, but in general space time, say cosmological space time, FRW and Dossita, you don't have that kind of natural real boundary in space. But there is a good candidate to think as a boundary in this context. That's hor holographic screen. Um, because the reason why you can think that uh, the bulk physics can be represented by a, a theory in one less dimension is because entropy is bounded by the surface of that. So you have to use that surface. And that surface is given by falling. Suppose you have some uh, uh, like foliation by light rays. Okay? This is a tenor xylon, these uh, lines are light rays. And then let's, let's think about this cosmological space time. And then I focus on this case, although the things are more general, but I focus on this case. Uh, that, that simplifies our discussion. This case plus antidocyter, antidocyter, and maybe I think a little bit. Um, so imagine that, and then if you imagine the observer is at r equals zero, you send in light rays towards the past. Okay? So initially, of course, that's expanding. Okay? Expansion theta which is a uh, rate of the change of uh, 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 cross-sectional area as a function of uh, uh, affine parameter. So initially, right, rays are of course expanding, but if you go farther and farther, result of gravity, as a result of gravity, this expansion change to contraction, right? Especially if you go to the Big Bang, you see that uh, area goes to right, shrink. And at some point, the area is maximized, namely expansion goes to zero. Initially, the first derivative of theta is an expansion. Okay, I use a theta to denote expansion. That's the first derivative, essentially first derivative of area. So area increases and goes to area change goes to zero, and then become negative. Okay? At that point for each null surface, the point where the theta becomes zero, and that is called uh, okay, that is called uh, leaf. Okay? And that gives an equal time surface at the boundary. And then you do this at a different time, and then that gives a co-dimension one object, which is called holographic screen. 
And on this holographic screen, each time of this dot, the surface of the dot or area surface area of the dot, which is called dimension two, bounds the entropy of the entire interior region. Okay? So that's the region I, I want to discuss today. Okay? This entire interior region. And then I, I, when I say boundary, it's this, yeah? this holographic screen. Right. So this, this, this is the key. So if you have any question, please ask now. And it's interesting thing is that because this is a marginally uh, anti trap surface, if you know it, like there is zero in one direction, because I send the right place and expansion is zero, and the other side in a cosmological case is positive. So let's focus on the positive case. It could be a negative, yeah? and, and that's called uh, uh, future progress screen. This is a class horrific screen. But anyway, this, this is like a, a marginally anti trap surface. So if you Fourier equal time in different ways, that condition is not met. So even if it's a, a holographic screen, the same, this foliation is unique okay? because of our marginally anti trap nature will determine that foliation. So the time slicing is uniquely fixed. And then you can even show that uh, with this fixed uh, uh, time slices, area is monotonically increasing. So effective degrees of freedom keep increasing. That's consistent with the second law of thumb, thumb dynamics. So things like a theory is, is making sense on, on, on this screen, and everything inside is bounded by area. Yeah? So that's the place. I, 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 have a, yeah. I have another question. Can you hear me? Yeah. OK, uh, great. So uh, my question is, like, in the context of ADSCC, like, uh, do you see like, a clear instances in which such holographic screens appear? Because uh, I don't think the, these expansions have such properties uh, when evaluated as asymptotic boundary. Uh, the, what, what I can, I mean, the, the, the instance in which I saw such holographic streams were future outer trapping horizons in the context of, you know, uh, quasi-local notions of horizons for black holes. Um, oh, no, I, I will discuss with the ADS CFT in relation to ADS CFT case. Yes, ADS CFT case is not really reaching to this uh, uh, holographic screen. In fact, I move in this boundary by a kind of minimization procedure, and I claim that in ADS case, even a synthetic boundary is not reaching there. And also, also from this discussion, it follows that the, I mean, if there is a microscopic description that is formulated on the holographic screen, it's not going to be Lorentz invariant, right? Because uh, somehow this, this holographic screen comes with a unique uh, time foliation, right? Is it correct or? On an ADS CFT case, because of the high symmetry, this foliation has some freedom, not completely unique. That corresponds to, by the way, uh, 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 conformal, conformal symmetry. But in general, it's me. OK, thanks. Yeah. All right, so this is a place where I, I kind of anchor this external surface if I just talk about HRT. Yeah? And then see whether that hypothesis, uh, where that hypothesis leads us to. Yeah? So, and first of all, we have to check, like, uh, uh, at least check whether it makes sense to put, now this is a holographic screen, and this is a, a co-dimension two equal time hypersurface stigma, which we call leaf. Yeah? A leaf, and, and then if you anchor on subregion of the leaf, leaf is actually a co-dimension two surface. It is uh, uh, written as a point in a Penrose diagram, but it's actually a co-dimension two surface. And if you anchor on the external surface to the subregion of this, and then you identify the area as at the leading order, area in unit of Planck over four as an entanglement entropy of that subregion. Okay? And the entanglement entropy, we know that uh, it, it, have to satisfy a lot of inequalities, say subalibility, alarky leaves from subalibility, and so on. So whether the area of this external surface satisfies this relation or not, is, it's, it's not obvious it's, it's satisfied. But now you can prove that uh, 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 those relations are satisfied. Yeah? And essentially, any, like, anything you can uh, prove by something called maximum procedure, like to get external surface, you first minimize in a special direction, and then uh, extremize uh, or maximizes in uh, all possible variation. Anything that we can show using that technique applies in this surface, namely leaf. Okay? If you just anchor external surface on some region of the leaf, and all these inequality follows. So first consistency check pass. But in general, if you just change the variation randomly, then it's no longer true. Okay? Not necessarily always satisfy uh, uh, this, this relation. <laughs> so only if we, you use good holographic screen and a specific leaf. It's not only, but it's uh, in that case it satisfies. Not completely general coordination to surface. Yeah, and for this relation to be satisfied, actually some complexity is important. 
In this holographic screen case, theta, theta is expansion always, so get theta in the direction of k, and I will use two vector k, it's inward future going, yeah? and L is outward future going. Because given co-dimension two surface, you always have four directions, right? Inwards, future, outwards, future, and inward past, and outward past. And inward future is called K always. So this will appear many times. And, and then outward going, future directed vector is called uh, L. Okay? And so in a uh, marginally anti trapped surface, theta K zero and theta L is, is positive. So theta L being positive means that theta minus L is negative. Yeah, in this direction, it's uh, light rays contracting. This direction is contracting, so it's, it's a convex. Yeah? So that condition seems to be important, and in marginally rough surface, it's satisfied. Yeah? Of course, marginally satisfied in k-direction. But uh, uh, that's crucial to prove uh, these, these relations, and which will become also important later. But at least in a screen, that's all satisfied, as long as it's anchored on the leaves. Yeah? Uh, so now, I have a question. Yeah. yeah. Do you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, so in this calculation, what is the what is the the entanglement entropy of what are you calculating? Oh, entanglement entropy of uh, supposedly uh, uh, some degrees of freedom uh, localized on uh, on the surface. That's the that's the hypothesis. Yeah? So we have you can formulate the degrees of freedom equally distributed on this uh, polydimension two surface like CFT. And, and it's like one degrees of freedom power uh, uh, for a plank. For right, a plank. But the, and the scaling law of that entanglement entropy, does it correspond to something that we know? Like, a, I suppose it's not a CFT, but something else? From that, we try to learn the property. Okay, okay. That's the idea, yes. Okay, thanks. Yeah. All right, so, uh, yes. So now we can do these things for our FRW uh, space time. Yeah, so FRW space time is and I'm, for simplicity here, I'm just putting one fluid component with the equation of state parameter W. Yeah? W equal minus one is a kind of cosmological constant, or W equal zero is a matter, W equal one third is a radiation, yeah? and, and then I'm thinking between minus one and one, that's uh, neural energy, the causal energy uh, uh, condition satisfied uh, uh, fluid. And then now, for example, if you think about this uh, bound, boundary, that's a cosmological, uh, uh, like this, Apparent horizon, again, yeah? so, or various different names for apparent horizon and a marginally anti, anti trough surface or a holographic screen relief. It's the same thing, you just send in the right rate towards the past when theta goes to zero in k direction, and then they have a co dimension two surface. That's what I'm writing here. Yeah? I'm suppressing time direction at this point. Yeah? This is a boundary sigma. Yeah? And I anchored extreme surface to this uh, uh, spherical cap region with the angle gamma. So gamma runs from zero to pi. Okay? So that's, and given gamma, and then I can calculate the area of this extreme surface. By the way, this extreme surface, I'm, I'm writing like a minimal surface, right? This is a minimal surface, but it goes into the time as well. And remember, we're treating a uh, uh, dynamical space time. So, uh, and, but that, no way I can write it. So I'm just writing like a uh, special, and section, but you can calculate extreme surface and then compute the area as a function of gamma for each value of W. Yeah? So it's, and, and as a function of W, then a couple of things you can learn. If the gamma goes to small, namely very small region, and this entanglement entropy, a hypothetical entanglement entropy, namely the area of extreme surface, divided by the volume of, of, the, of the boundary theory, the volume over four, the boundary theory, goes to one. Okay? So it's saturated. So it's a volume law. Yeah? It's, it's at the short distance, it looks like a maximum entanglement. If you just think about the very small region, it's like a page, you know, if a page is satisfied, uh, a maximum entanglement with the rest. That makes sense because in flat space, if you think about the boundary, because it's a flat space, external surface or minimal area surface anchored to the boundary. Minimal area surface is boundary itself, of course, right? I mean, it's just a flat space, the boundary is a dimension one, like a plane, then you have a circle on the plane, and then what's the minimal area surface anchored to that, that circle is this uh, disk itself. That's the volume of the boundary theory, yeah? From boundary point of view. So ADS is very special, right? So certainly, uh, a minimal area surface area is also proportional to area of the boundary, 
because, of course, uh, initially external surface stick out orthogonally from the uh, 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 ADS boundary in ADS case. But usually, minimal area surface at short distance looks like a flat space, so it goes to volume law, which would be, which is certainly covered because of the flat space. Yeah. Short distance it looks like flat space for any value of W. Yeah. And then now, if your angle goes to bigger and bigger and bigger, and then the entropy of region uh, L gamma, this cap, in units of uh, the volume of the boundary, it, it start decreasing. Yeah? But in a way, it depends on W, yeah? uh, uh, equation of state parameter. And this decrease, it becomes zero at dosita limit. So dosita space is kind of maximum entropy, maximum entropy. That's, of course, something we kind of think, because dosita horizon looks like black hole horizon. Yeah? So that's also we cover. So this is something you can even now compute. Yeah? But now you can uh, analyze a lot of things like, uh, uh, like dependence on the angle, okay? and, uh, and you, uh, uh, so this certainly, at least this certainly tells you that the state, the theory is not, it's, the situation is not like a local theory near ground state, because then we know that uh, uh, then the boundary entanglement entropy must satisfy area law. That's, what happens to in CFT, actually, and that's not the case. Boundary satisfied volume law, at least at, at uh, short distances. So this is not uh, ground state over local theory. But in fact, by uh, thinking more carefully, you also uh, can see that this is not even highly excited states in the local theory. Okay? Uh, uh, as a function of the distance and the complexity is, uh, is opposite and so on, so it's certainly non-local, seems, seems like a non-local theory. Okay, so, and that's something we expect, okay, if you move in the boundary from ADS, uh, uh, beyond the ADS radius, then theory, no, no reason to expect the theory to be local, okay, so that's non-local theory. But then if it's a theory is non-local, what we can do, okay, so I'm not specifying real theory, you can't really compute and stuff from the boundary point of view, and if everything is non-local, that's it, okay, so we learn that it's non-local, and it's cool, probably something going on, does it uh, is an entropy limit, it's, it's cool. But okay, that's that's the maximum we can borrow. But it, if that were the case, but it's not. So you can see it can do. You can do more. Yeah, that's called something my student uh, called ER equal one minus EP. You <laughs> say something like uh, uh, actually the space time is better to do. It's not. It's entanglement is certainly needed, but it's not entanglement in 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 some sense. The lack of entanglement is what's creating the space time. That's what I'm going to do next. Okay, so the claim is that space-time disappears in the limit that uh, entropy of the subregion become maximum. Maybe it, it goes to volume in unit of four, uh, one of one quarter of the Planck uh, units. So it, when I'm talking about that, this space-time, I mean a directly reconstructable region. For example, you can reconstruct outside the black hole horizon by a, a cross-section of a, a external surface, or in general, entanglement wedge, that's the domain of dependence of entanglement of region. Yeah, I, I don't think uh, I need to go, given a, a question I got so far. So you have entanglement wedge, but if not, uh, ask me what entanglement wedge is. Entanglement wedge, and you have an edge of the entanglement wedge, and if you can, uh, if you, you can, uh, if you can uh, specify a bulk point by uh, intersection of edge of the entanglement wedge, that you can construct a local operator using entanglement wedge construction without doing fancy stuff like uh, interior of the black hole, possibly state the pandemic, whatever, more, more funky stuff. And that's the region I care for now. Okay? That, but that does not mean I do not claim that interior black hole doesn't exist. Okay? <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm just interested here, like something you can directly reconstruct without using you know, funky stuff, like it's an uh, exterior of the black hole. That region disappears as the boundary um, state becomes maximally entropic, in a sense that, like, uh, like uh, this line. Okay? So in that limit, the, you, you lose uh, ability to uh, describe space-time using standard techniques. So to see, see this, in a fast trivial kind of trivial example is even ADS-CFT. If you think about ADS-CFT on some fixed uh, finite boundary, yeah, that's, 
That's why I also went to the TT bar and later we discussed TT bar. But imagine that you have some region, you could renormalize in the boundary into some finite region, finite radius, big R. And now if you, if you heat this system up, then of course black hole forms and black hole become bigger and bigger and bigger. And at some point, if the temperature become cut off scale of the CFT, right? This is a cut off CFT, you just always can put in the boundary, this is a cut off CFT. And if the temperature approaches cut off, that's the, break, and that's the point where the, the horizon of the black hole uh, uh, touches this cut off surface. So actually outside the black hole clearly disappears. And in that limit, the entropy goes to a volume row. And exactly volume row is saturated, this volume goes to zero. So when the boundary state becomes maximally entropic, like the boundary surface becomes the same as black hole horizon, yes, actually space-time is, is disappearing. Yeah? In a sense of outside the horizon. Yeah? And if, if you can ask the question whether analogous phenomenon happens in, in, in FRW. In, in fact, we exactly see the same phenomenon. <laughs> yeah? So uh, I, I just said that in a dosital limit, uh, as a function of radius r, gamma, sorry, the, the, the opening angle gamma, in any region, the entanglement entropy computed by this uh, procedure uh, saturate the volume of the boundary, yeah? Like, like, like black hole, it's hitting uh, boundary in area safety. But then if you look at that, suppose you think about this, okay, this is a boundary, okay, of the, of the space, x, y, so two-dimensional space, yeah? and the meter is time. Conformal time, all right? So then in a dosita limit, suppose you think about this boundary, this, this circle, and you think about this region, sub-region, like here, yeah? Then the external surface must be anchored to this point and that point, yeah? Then you compute external surface, you always be on this light cone, okay? always on this light cone. And then time evolution of uh, dosita is like a next leaf is going exactly in that direction, right? Because a dosita, dosita horizon or boundary is a horizon, so it's just in this right cone direction. So this external surface never go into the, uh, uh, into the cone. So in the purely dosita vacuum state, and you, you, something you can reconstruct by say intersection of the entanglement surface and something, is literally co-dimension one. So you can't re really uh, reconstruct space-time co-dimension zero surface. So it's pretty much the same thing happens. In, in the black hole case, it, that co-dimension one is just a cylinder, right? It just, uh, horizon touches to uh, uh, the boundary of circle R and then time direction, right? So you don't have any space time in the sense of co-dimension zero in the space time. Exactly the same thing happens to those in the minute. So only if there is some small matter component like our own universe or W they get from minus point one to point nine nine then space-time volume starts showing up, okay? So, and, and then you can understand this from kind of uh, beautifully from a tensor network type uh, 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 intuition, that every boundary region is maximally entangled with the rest, okay? In the dosita case, you can show that not just the spherical cap region, you can prove that every shaped uh, boundary region, the entanglement entropy is precisely uh, proportional to volume of the boundary theory times one quarter. Okay? So that type of thing in a uh, tensor network uh, picture is realized by some single dot and every leg, because boundary is this, these things, okay? boundary is these things, is all maximally entangled with the rest, is like one dot, okay? the, the tensor network, and everything's over. Okay? So that's the state of maximally entangled of the, these legs, these, 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 these. To reduce entanglement, what you can do? What you can do is split this node into two, like this. Then this boundary state, like consisting of eight uh, uh, points, the boundary state is not the maximum entanglement anymore because you split this uh, bulk point into two. And now you start having a non trivial space in which you can, you can talk about in the sense of error correction. Yeah? So this is, this is the region. So the space time shows up because your entanglement entropy in the boundary state is not maximum, okay? So that will uh, uh, lead to uh, space. And we usually don't talk in this way because ADS CFT case, we just put out from vacuum. The vacuum is a very special state. It's area law satisfying from boundary point of view. But generic state certainly is a volume law, 
of the page, right? You have a generic quantum state. You take a generic quantum state, and then the entropy of any region goes like volume, yeah? And in that limit, actually, space-time picture doesn't exist in the sense of directly reconstructed region. You deviate from that typical state by reducing entanglement the entropy, then there is the coordination zero space time starts to okay. so That's one thing we do now. So, so what's going on? So actually it's like entanglement or only one entropy of some region with the rest is not a good thing to, to diagonalize uh, whether space time picture shows up holographically or not. Because if it's a maximum, actually you don't have a space time. If it's a zero, clearly don't, don't, you don't have space time either, right? I mean, that, that's everybody knows, like uh, um, um, Ramstone and, and people. Um, despite the fact that this entanglement entropy is relevant to calculate, say, area. Okay? Area, area from boundary point of view is defined as you split boundary into very small regions, I, and you compute the entanglement entropy or volume entropy of all these regions, S of I, that, because that means that that's uh, 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 like uh, uh, HRT surface anchor to very small region is a boundary itself always, because the flat space, as I said, the flat space minimum surface is just a boundary itself, and you sum up. Yeah? Then, of course, that will produce an area, right? The entire area of the boundary. Right? Because you're computing the area of the small region and the area of the next small region, the area of the next small region, those small area can be computed by computing the volume and entropy of the small region. So volume and entropy of, of some region with the whole rest is relevant quantity still because it, it's control area like this. But that's not a good uh, uh, quantity because if that becomes maximum on, for all the regions, including deep regions, then space time disappears. What's going on? You can see that in, in that case, what's happening is that Actually, maximum entropic state, so maximally, maximally entangled state. If you think about region A, the density matrix is unit, yeah? it's maximally entangled. The density matrix of the region B is maximally entangled. And in like Dositer or, or space time filling a black hole, then region AB, the density matrix is also one, right? Because that's a maximum entropy. So that means that the density matrix of the region AB is just direct one is a direct product of one cross one. <laughs> so no correlation in fact. This is uh, literally at the density matrix level. You, the correlation is the maximum. If you think about the small region A with the entire rest, that's a maximum correlation. But if you think about small region and nearby small region, it's not correlated at all. And in that limited space time disappears. So what is relevant for space time is not like some region, correlation of some region with the entire rest, but not the local correlation is actually what is important. Despite the fact that the Hamiltonian may be non local, we saw that uh, uh, entanglement structure is not like a ground state of the, uh, of the local theory or even excited state of the local theory, but this, the property of the state characterizing the emergence of the uh, vertical direction, holographic direction, is a local correlation still. Yeah? In fact, later we we'll see that uh, uh, that kind of local correlation can be measured by something called entanglement of purification. That's actually almost measuring like uh, how much sticking out from, from the boundary. That's also consistent. So some local features involved. So it's not like a totally non-local. We don't know anything. Okay? The theory is Hamiltonian non-local and the state is non-locally correlated. Zero idea. That's not like that. The space-time must be emerging from some local correlation. So only reason. So then uh, there is a hope to harvest such a local correlation step by step in the sense of RG. And it must be able to uh, uh, have a corresponding picture of uh, the bulk space time in the sense of RG. Yeah. So that's what we will try next. So we coarse graining step by step the short range correlation. So for our minimization group in general space time. So where uh, that uh, uh, here we use this uh, quantum error correction, like subregion, subregion duality. It seems like I'm already spent half of, of, the, of the time, so I'm being a bit quick. The idea is that anything which is represented in the bulk, this is this is supposed to be external surface anchored to the boundary of that region, and anything happening in this region, and in fact, more precisely, domain of dependence of this region, is representable in this region only. Yeah, so that's a sub-region, sub-region duality. Yeah, that's uh, at least in area 60, it's pretty much uh, uh, well established. In fact, this is more or less direct consequence of this uh, HRT formula, or root academy formula. 
So we kind of already as assuming that that applies to our case as well. So that means that if you coarse grain, short distance means that you coarse grain short distance physics. And then suppose you coarse grain region A, so we, you're not asking anything about what, uh, what's happening in this region, subregion A. And then, then you have information only for this A bar. Okay? Then that information is equivalent to uh, entanglement wage, namely domain of dependence of this region or A bar. Okay? So that means what coarse grain means. Coarse grain means that suppose you have a, a leaf of the holographic screen, that's like the initial of this uh, big circle sigma, and then you want to coarse grain the distance scale delta. So you're not asking anything about what's happening inside this delta. Then only information you can recover in the bulk is this complement, so this big thing minus this one, and domain of dependence of that. Okay? But you also coarse grain this region delta, so only thing we can reconstruct in the bulk is complement of that region, and, and then uh, domain of dependence of that. Okay? So you coarse grain all these scale delta, then only thing you can reconstruct in the bulk is uh, intersection or internal wedge of complement of this small region. So minute you coarse grain short distance correlation from the original leaf, you cannot reproduce original space time. It's anchored to this sigma, the sigma one coarse grain, sigma coarse grain one. Only the domain dependence of this can be reproduced if you're not accessing short distance correlation smaller than delta, okay. and it's consistent with this subregion subregion duality, perfectly consistent. So if you coarse grain sigma, that means that effectively you're moving boundary inside because the only thing you can uh, uh, describe is this smaller cone, smaller diamond, and you can show that this intersection of the entanglement wedge of the complement of, of the region is always, this itself is domain of dependence. You can always uniquely define this, this surface sigma one. Okay? So you can coarse grain. And so this is renormalization, your course and short distance uh, uh, correlation, and then whether this picture is consistent. It's beautifully consistent. This is here, uh, you see, uh, like non trivial Now, if you move in like this, yeah, the course grain short distance, and the boundary you move in in a unique way, yeah, depending on the course grain, depending on delta. Yeah? So if you can take delta, and then it's move in. And then this, we call renormalized leaf, sigma one, itself, is convex. You can prove it's always con convex. Okay? So, but now in this k direction and the minus l direction is not necessarily marginally anti -trap. Yeah, It's a normal surface. Okay? In general, if you move in, minute you move in from leaf, then it's a normal surface. Okay? But it's the normal surface is convex. Yeah? That means that you can do again this uh, procedure of course graining and move in, and that's also convex. You can show it. And then you can move in by coarse grading, taking the intersection of all these uh, uh, internal wedge of the complement of the uh, region, and then you move in more, you move in more, you move in more. Yeah? So you can success successively do this uh, renormalization procedure. And in a limit that this delta goes to zero, like this coarse graining, each step coarse graining is infinitesimal, like a like renormalization group. And then in that limit, this surface is in fact unique. So you can have a bulk unique foliation preferred by holography. Yeah? You have a holographic screen, you have unique formulation of the leaf at the boundary. Yeah? Now for each leaf, they will each equal time hypersurface of the boundary. Now you can do this RG procedure continuously, uniquely sweeps the bulk yeah? as a bulk equal time surface, given by this uh, uh, continuous procedure of post graining short distance, post graining short distance, post graining short distance. Yeah? And some region A in the original leaf can be mapped to some different next different region A by the sub orthogonal surface of the leaf. Yeah. So I, I, have a, I have a question. So don't you have some freedom in the way you're going to coarse grain? I mean, can't you imagine coarse grain in some homogeneous way? As long as, yeah, as long as delta goes to zero, like it doesn't depend on even shape or something. Yeah, it has to be homogeneous. Yeah, I put that. So, in a, 
So it's statistically have to be homogeneous. Yeah. But it doesn't depend on, it can be bold and it can be, you know, some stupid shape or stupid shape even changing. But you have a, a like a cumulative factor that like in X direction it's squashed and then Y direction it's always small, then yes. But that's a different gauge fixing in a moment. So that's correspond to even in a usual Wilsonian learning, you can lower the cutoff position dependently, right? Of course you can do it. But, uh, yeah, certainly that freedom is there. It's same as the usual renormalization group. You can lower the cutoff in the position dependent way. But unless you do that, and then it doesn't depend on detail, microscopic detail of the shape of this delta size region and, and so on. That, that's what I meant by unique. Thanks. That's good. It's okay. Okay. Yes. Uh, so now, uh, uh, if this uh, uh, is really moving in, is a post graining procedure, then effective degrees of freedom must decrease. That means that this procedure must reduce area each step. Which is kind of obvious in a flat space uh, intuition, but in a general cup space, it's not obvious. You can just do this procedure, but area could increase in principle, but it's not. You can show that it's always decreased. The, the reason is, the proof is pretty simple. Like, it, convexity is preserved. That's, that's kind of everything you need to, to show this, because K direction, it's contraction, and minus N direction is contraction, and holographic screen moves somewhere in between. Yeah? Because the external surface is contained. That's, something you can show in the case of convex. So contain in this region, so it goes inside, that's the linear combination K and minus L. And K and minus L expands both negative. So linear, uh, 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 yes, linear combination with a positive coefficient of negative quantities, so, negative. so it's just expanded negative. It's always uh, uh, area, I keep decreasing, yes, region by region. Okay, so that's consistent with the interpretation that's the coarse graining. And in fact, if we coarse graining entanglement means that any von Neumann entropy of re original region A, and if you move in, von Neumann entropy of the region A prime, which corresponds to the original region, which can be uniquely determined by orthogonal surface of, of this, orthogonal surface to this A and A, A prime, and then entropy of the region A prime must be smaller than entropy of A. Right? That's highly non-trivial statement from the bulk point of view. In the bulk point of view, extremum surface anchored to the uh, boundary of a prime is always smaller than the area of the external surface of gamma a, which is anchored to a. The relation and a and a prime is given by this uh, uh, like convolution of small external surface of the a. So if you think about the original some collimation to surface, if you do the small uh, external surface, okay, like, like this, this delta, and you, have, you think about the convolution of these things, that become delta one and delta two. And this surface and the corresponding region, external surface anchored to the corresponding region, it's always a monotonic. You can prove this in GR. Okay. So this can be even a genuinely stated as a theorem of GR. Of course, nobody really stated this as a theorem because it's so stupid think this kind of very special situation. So A is there, and A prime is there, and then external surface. Think of the external surface anchored to A prime, and then A, and then this is always more. So I didn't find any theorem like this, but you can show it. So this is a theorem of general relativity. And the point is that these things, the general relativity did not a priori have to have any of these properties. Okay? So this is something required if this correspondence between the corner information quality on the boundary, so boundary for general space and the holographic screen are even, even generated even more by renormalizing in, and all of these stages, if uh, uh, economic information quantity and the bulk things are related as in HRT, then GR must have this property, and GR did have that property, which we didn't know. Okay? So the point is that this kind of idea or hypothesis could have been falsified at this point, but it was not. So this is what I meant using general relativity as an experiment. You just postulate, the initial things are postulate. Okay, this relation, which we learn in areas, is more general, that's my postulate, and then you uh, you derive the consequences and then check whether that agree with experiment okay, or, or GR. And it's miraculously uh, seems to be uh, satisfied. And in fact, it's a lot of relation is really consistent with GR. For example, yeah, I wouldn't go through everything, but uh, suppose you, you think about this boundary uh, sigma, or it could, can be even renormalized boundary, or it's called renormalized leaf, and, and I can move in. 
And then uh, uh, if you anchor to this, and then you do this small external surface to move in only part of the boundary, so move in, move in, move in, move in, move in, move in, then this move in renormalized, renormalized surface should not go beyond the original HRT surface, right? Because if it did, A contains information only within the original HRT surface. This is the only region A could recover. But if by doing, small, by small step, if you could, could go more, then that's inconsistent. Because uh, uh, the theorem of the subregion subregion duality is that it's if and only if type of statement. Like information in, in the region A is not more than, uh, and not less than something it's contained in this in that range. So if you do the small step, small step, it should, go beyond, should not go beyond. That's guaranteed because external surface is a barrier for any external surface as proved by uh, Andrew Hart and Wall. So it never happens. So by, by splitting into it, you don't gain more information. So, so this means, and you can do really literally post graining like in, in a way, this is something uh, uh, somebody asked before. It's not doing uniformly. You can do if you choose it. You can do the position dependent normalization. Yeah. So then you can do it, but that's also consistent. Okay. And so you just have a boundary. Then you move in and you normalize it. You normalize it. You normalize it. The point later it becomes important is that each renormalized leaf is equal footing as original leaf. So each renormalized leaf describes full diamond which is bounded by a renormalized leaf. So it's a successive description of the boundary states. So successive description of not like surface from bulk point of view, successive description of the diamond. Okay? And now it's a smaller diamond, smaller diamond, smaller diamond. Okay? That's the, what, what's going on here. Okay. So properties. And in fact, these things has very good properties. And one confusion we had in this bulk reconstruction program, at least in, in our early days, is the existence of something called entanglement shadow. Yeah? Entanglement shadow is not like region inside the black hole. Suppose you have a conical ADS, you just uh, identify the discrete symmetry with ADS, then this region, you can never reach by HRT surface. So it seems like any reconstruction procedure cannot reconstruct in this region. <laughs> it's weird, it's not like a horizon is there, not special. In fact, you can just show that if you have ADS and you have just a normal star, like a neutron star or even, I don't know, sun or some sufficient heavy normal star, not black hole, then you have this shadow region. You try to go, to, uh, because the, uh, HRT surface, minimal surface anchored to this is this, minimal surface anchored to this is that, minimal surface anchored to the next region is this, and then you have a phase transition. the next region is like this, so you just go to, go to, go to, and then Okay? So you just never uh, uh, go to this region. So that was a very stupid feature of this reconstruction using uh, HRT surface. But now, but it is known that extremum surface can go into. Yeah? But the minimal area extremum surface can go. That's the HRT surface. Yeah? Because it's, yeah. In general, for given boundary subregion, you have the multiple extremum surface. Only minimal area one is chosen as an HRT surface. But the prescription is that that's, the, that's what matters. Yeah? So it's just was strange that the, why we can't go into this some random space-time region. But here, it's clear because we're doing infinitesimal, okay, infinitesimal uh, thing, and then you move in. And then you do the next infinitesimal thing is not anchored to the original boundary, but anchored to only the normalized boundary, which is closer to the shadow region. And you compute, it's doing, doing, doing this, after you don't have any, uh, Obstacle, you should just cap in. Cap, yeah. Okay. Okay. stress just goes in. So the shadow was artifact of doing, try to reconstruct by one shot. <laughs> I will come back to that in the, some, some final slide. And but by doing in a multiple shot, and then uh, you can just avoid this. It's precisely like renormalization proof. If you want to uh, do the renormalization to one shot, if a logarithm becomes bigger, and you can't describe by perturbation theory, but that's a fake. You can do like a you group to resum the large logarithm, and then you can go into it. The same thing's happening. So that's sort of the completely entanglement shallow problem. But on the other hand, interior of the black hole is carefully avoided. So if you think about, say, eternal two-sided black hole, starting from this leaf, and then you do the renormalization procedure, it goes to the bifurcation surface. You cost grain, cost grain, cost grain, cost grain, and go to bifurcation surface. You cost grain from this, and cost grain, cost grain, and go to bifurcation surface. 
Okay. Yeah. That's correspond to in the infrared, it goes to some non-trivial fixed uh, point, like that non non-trivial area in this very special case. But in general, it's collapsed formed black hole, then this is a horizon, and then coarse grain it can go to like along the horizon and Suppose you form the black hole by an uh, ingoing new shell, and then be inside the new shell, it's a flat space, so it's like this. Yeah. So in, in, in the other coordinate, it looks like this. If you just coast grain, coast grain, then surface goes along the black hole, and then okay, it smoothly caps. So namely, uh, this boundary preferred time foliation is like short shoot foliation. Yeah, naturally we produce time slicing, which is natural from outside viewpoint. So it, it, it doesn't go into right? in the short should coordinate, short should equal time, it's always repelled from our uh, horizon. Yeah. So it's the boundary picture is perfectly consistent. And if you do that in FRW, now even very interesting thing, as, as I said, like in Dosita case, this movie end is along the exactly like light like cone. So it's only like uh, co dimension one, and the evolution is also along the light cone. So then, therefore, you can reproduce only co dimension one surface. But in general, what's happening is the following. Now, if you start from leaf, yeah, the sigma is a leaf. It's the equal time surface of the whole screen, the leaf. So theta k is zero, theta l is non zero. Okay, that's an initial uh, marginally anti trap. And then expansion. If you think about the vector s in which direction the screen goes, okay? let's, let's call this as s. The direction screen moves by uh, a convoluting very small external surface and then see the convolution curve. And okay? that direction s is given by this formula. Okay? Expansion in k direction, theta k and l vector. L vector is that vector. And expansion in l direction and k vector. So that always go inside this domain of dependence d sigma direction, you know, right? L is this direction, but theta k equals zero. Uh, sorry, theta k is in general or, or negative. And, and then theta l is, is in general positive, but the k is that direction. So it's like always moving in that direction. But at the initial stage, yeah, the beginning, because theta k is zero by definition of the uh, marginal interrupt surface. So it exactly goes to k direction, it's proportional to k. So this move in initially goes to like right direction, right? But then you, if you move in, then it's not marginally drop surface, but at normal surface, theta k deviates from zero. Therefore, the next you can curve in to, to interior of the, of the ball. Yeah? That's what's happening. So that's the disminimalization will lead to. But then uh, uh, some already asked, ADS, usually that's not the case. In ADS, renormalization will go to Z direction. Okay? So what's going on? What's going on is the following. Okay? If you think about the up, other opposite direction of, of uh, RGE, you reach the point where theta k goes to zero. That's the limit you can go, the maximum place where, where boundary can uh, abound the entropy. In ADS case, it doesn't reach because if you calculate theta k and theta L, because it's asymptotically ADS space, the theta k goes to zero. But theta L also goes to zero at the same speed. Okay. Therefore, you can never go to the regime where theta k goes zero and theta L is non-zero. So S is goes to k direction. No, theta k and theta L both goes to zero. So equal superposition of L and k. So that goes to precisely this z direction, okay? space space right direction. So the cutoff ADS you usually have to cut anyway, right? It's epsilon, like you just cut the epsilon. And with Prescription and so on, that's already renormalized leaf. And the theta k, theta l, okay, asymptotically goes to zero, but the both at the same rate. Okay? So it's already renormalized, and already, this, this curve is already flattened out. Okay? That's correspond to ADS. And ADS conformal boundary comes before photographic degree, okay? or cut, cut off ADS boundary comes before. And same for Minkowski, because asymptotically Minkowski space clearly like expansion goes to zero no matter anything. So theta goes to zero, theta L goes to zero, but at the same rate. So it's just uh, uh, this uh, holographic screen, it becomes actual equal time surface of the Minkowski. screen. That you can show it. It's just uh, uh, like Lorentzian uh, equal time. Okay? So uh, if you normalize the holographic screen, is here, and then time is this, and, and then these are uh, boundary preferred for creation. Okay? And if you relate to time minus infinity and the plus infinity, that's of course what we call S matrix. It's just 
Yeah, so smoothly can uh, connect to ADS and Minkowski. But this point doesn't exist for this space yeah, because of this asymptotic feature. Hopefully that answers the earlier question. Okay, so this holographic cost graining, we can put in, uh, even in a, in a bigger framework that uh, now its area is finite means that effective degrees of freedom is finite. Yeah? But given that this effective degrees of freedom is finite, like effective Hilbert space uh, uh, dimension is finite, means just if you compute small entropy in the re each region and sum up like extensive entropy, if you compute this, that's finite. Yeah? But that does not mean that the true Hilbert space has a finite degree of freedom. Just simply entanglement is not enough. Like all microscopic degrees of freedom in uh, this, let's call UV Hilbert space, is all entangled. Then it's just summing up, then it's infinity. But short distance entanglement does not exist. That's the reason why area looks finite, and then it's smaller than infinity. So in fact, all these leaves living there actually in the same Hilbert space, so just simply short distance uh, entanglement is like more entanglement added, added, added short distance. Therefore, this area looks like increasing. Yeah, effective degrees of freedom, because area is just this. Yeah? This quantity keeps increasing. So despite the fact that the leaf area changes, it, it's not living in the different Hilbert space. Then you may not know what to do. Yeah? This is the same Hilbert space, just degrees of freedom, short distance and time keep being added, and that's the second law of thermal dynamics. That's what's happening in an area law increase, or like expand on the space time. That was discussed by, under the name of uh, surface state correspondence, and it's the same as uh, uh, this procedure corresponds to continuous version of the mirror. It's a C mirror. And so the, what really like this, uh, each disentangling procedure, microscopic disentangling or moving procedure correspond to in this language is uh, something related with the entanglement of purification. Because now I, I emphasize that the correlation between small region A and next small region B is what's important to, uh, to present the bulk. It's true, yes, this uh, real correlation, yeah, not volumen to of A, or not volume entropy B itself, correlation between A and B, that's computed from uh, entanglement of purification, that's given by cross-sectional area of entanglement. Right? That's the proposal. If that is non-zero, namely correlation is non-zero, namely this is non-zero, only in that case you can move in. Okay? So that's what's relevant. So this, like I, I was doing this, small, 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 small half circle, correspond to like we're using these things and extract this, move in. So make this the much more explicit will be very interesting. So that, 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 that's just the idea. And maybe in relation with the uh, ADS um, CFT holograph, okay, that's probably sidetrack, but um, uh, because I was originally asked to give a TT box, so I, just, uh, I just thought that I have to put this right on, just talk about TT. But you may think if you're familiar with the ADS CFT, oh, this is not what happened in ADS CFT. Because if you move in like Wilsonian RGE, Saskin Whitman discussed that by the time you move in, uh, the boundary into the ADS radius, then the number of cell or number of cutoff cell become one, all the one, and every flat space region is just simply described as an n by n matrix, okay? not like uh, entanglement entropy of a subregion. You don't have any concept of subregion because it's one cell here. And here is, uh, we are saying that no, 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 you can redistribute degrees of freedom, <laughs> can even in a way that it can go inside even ADS region, like even a single flat looking region or some region you can just go into by using RT formula. You can have, you can do this rearrangement of the degrees of freedom to the boundary space. And as a possible, it's consistent, it's true, right? We did the check of the GR and so on. Is there any example? One example of such renormalization is TT deformation. <laughs> we can show that this TT, if you deform the conformal field theory by some uh, uh, by, by linear uh, uh, energy momentum tensor operator, TT, no time to explain, but then that corresponds to moving in the boundary, that was supposed. And then if you do this, and then you can calculate the entanglement entropy of the boundary by a replica trick, because now you have a theory, okay, so whose UV structure we don't really know because it's the form of the irrelevant operator TT, but you can compute uh, by replica trick and formally, and you can compute entanglement entropy of, say, half region. Okay. Technically, it was done only on half region, but half region. But now you can compute in ADS this uh, area independently. And whether you see whether this agrees. And we keep agreeing for all R, even if you just move in by uh, making TT by deformation huge, and then cut off is inside ADS radius, 
this both computation and the replicatory boundary calculation keep giving the same answer, even if this renormalization goes inside the ADS radius. That's something uh, we explain show later based on earlier works by, by these people. That was uh, the last work. So at least it's reasonable, even in ADS, that there is a scheme to redistribute the degrees of freedom or matrix degrees of freedom in a way that it can still look like co dimension one as holographic screen and you move it. And this will answer what the net tensor networks actually was. And in a dynamical space time, at some point people struggling, what's the, what's the tensor network picture of dynamical space time? Because now if you look at this, that if you think about tensor network is kind of triangularization or something like that, discretization of this uh, co-dimension one surface in the box, then you have a following problem. If you anchor this and you compute entanglement entropy by the number of cuts, but this entanglement, uh, uh, gamma a and gamma like extremal surface is in general not on this surface it's stick out usually but then what's this tensor network is doing yeah. you can't you really cut but then this extremal surface is not on the on the surface represented by entanglement uh, uh, of the tensor network but that's completely missing the point this tensor network is that this layer sigma and next layer sigma one Next layer sigma two is exactly this renormalized leaf. That is a boundary state, renormalized boundary state. So each renormalized leaf describes entire diamond. <laughs> so something tensor networks computing by number minimal number of cuts is actually some surface inside diamond need not be on this surface or whatever it's clear. Yeah? So keep that each layer of the tensor network is still boundary states. Each time it just goes grain. Yeah? So therefore, at each layer they present whole diamond. Yeah? That, that, that's what tensor network is doing. So I would say this is a triangulation of the holographic slice. Yeah? And each layer is still boundary state. Yeah? And in fact, using that, you can even argue that the HRT cone is the same as RT cone or something. I just, uh, maybe. So, um, so this will just uh, give you some, uh, like, in more bigger. Uh, picture. So you, your Hilbert space is actually infinite dimensional. But because of short range uh, entanglement is missing, so if you compute the area of that Hilbert space, or the area of the work picture, and you have to sum up with the entanglement entropy of the short, the small regions, and that gives a finite quantity, which can change if you just change the microscopic entanglement structure. So area can change as a function of time. That's a dynamical evolution that they have over space time and so on. And this way of uh, treating a uh, uh, post graining uh, uh, that provides you uh, holography motivated exactly like gauge fixing in all because equal time surface is unique under the assumption of homogeneity and doing stuff, and then it's uniquely uh, fixing space time, the Fourier to space time. And of course, there is some limitation because this uh, is like a semi classical procedure, so you have to apply this to each in branches. Because in general, quantum state is a superposition of totally different geometry. And then you have to do this procedure each branch by branch. But, but nothing, nothing prevents us to do it. Yeah. So the Minkowski limit is clearly uh, it's infinite. So it's a true Hilbert space dimension is infinite. And then you can even do a cosmology. So the, OK, so let's, let's wrap up. It's almost one hour. So summarizing that the holography is a key to quantum gravity, and, and the idea is, of course, emergence of space-time is to do with the quantum correlation or quantum information theoretic correlation in the holographic boundary degrees of freedom. And, and this idea is even beyond ADS safety, but it's not really consistent with general relativity, which could have not been the case. Yeah? And we can check these deviations. And the deviation of the holographic state from gen generic state because generic state is maximal entropy, is the key to produce space time. So actually, space time, or not the uh, co dimension zero space time, is a property of non genericity in this effective Hilbert space on HMFT. Okay. So that's an ADSK ACFT case. This is far from real because you're talking about the perturbation of the ground state, which is from the beginning, it's a very special state. It's area low in boundary, yeah. far from being generic more and more. And uh, but there is some uh, uh, bulk correspondence of the procedure of harvesting, yeah, short distance, and going going into, into, into. Yeah? And then it beautifully produces a short, short slicing, and then no shallow. And in terms of shallow, 
this is much better because if you think about the usual perturbation theory, even usual QED, this is a following statement too, right? E squared over 16 pi squared, that's the root expansion parameter. But if the energy of the scattering is very different from uh, 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 mass of electron, even if coupling constant is small, you can't reconstruct this region because log over, uh, compensate this smallness of E squared over 16 pi squared. So this region, the uh, red region, seems to be not possible to describe in perturbation uh, series expansion. But that's not true. We know how to do it. Yeah, it's a renormalization group. You resum this logarithm, me times log me and 2me, and log 2me and 3me, and log 2me, 4me, and log 4me and 8me. So you just keep resumming these things step by step. At the cost of making coupling constant, we know, uh, uh, we know, we know the coupling, learning coupling constant. And you can choose this mu to scaling gradually to the, to the closer to the energy scale of your experiment. Yeah. Then you can go more. And at that point, you hit the real, real limitation of perturbative construction. That's called random ball, of course. Yeah. And that corresponds to this. A directly reconstructed region is a one shot because you use the HLT surface from the boundary without the normalization. It's a one shot. Then you have a holographic, uh, you have a done shadow, some region which you can't reach without good reason. But now if you do it successively moving in, moving in, moving in, using smaller external surface and then convolution of that, and moving, 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 moving in, shadow doesn't exist. You just go through. Yeah? That's corresponding to renormalization group. But even then, hit the real boundary, that's the horizon of the black hole, because this procedure never went inside the horizon because this repairing feature, which is real, real, real. So that really requires some non perturbative really non perturbative That's the things we are, of course, discussing like interior black hole and state dependence and so on, something more funky things needed. So that gives a beautiful picture like of what's going on in the bulk reconstruction from the point of view. And then, of course, next direction is to put the high order correction. This is all reading order I should have mentioned. The one over n, the reading order in one over n, how to implement the corner effect. That's something we are trying to look at, and, and because it's important for evaporation and stuff. And you, you, you want to have a very explicit descent angle realizing this from the boundary point of view. So something to do with the local correlation. Okay? So probably uh, entanglement of purification, something to play an important role. And relation to other approaches, other people doing beautiful stuff too. So what's the relation with that? And in the end, of course, the real question is what's the theory on this in general space-time program. That's it. Thank you. Thank you very much for your talk. Uh, so, yes, one more question, please. It's possible to learn. Uh, it's, it's okay. Should yes, can you, can you hear? Yeah, yeah. yes. Can you learn? Uh, okay, thank you very much by your presentation. It's a very, very interesting uh, issue. Uh, yeah. I have a simple question. Uh, yeah. Possible to investigate the emergent space time. Uh, in terms of um, uh, some metric or in terms of some tensor uh, description, uh, 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 there is a there is a, a dynamical dynamical system about the, the metric to uh, characterize the the emergent space time. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're using tensor, you, you said, because I just had only word tensor. But I, the prediction tensor network is because you, I, I'm not, I'm maybe not answering. It, 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 what the tensor network is doing is take a snapshot of equal time and then try to see how bulk immersion, that's like uh, this moving. So if you want to think about time direction, tensor network may not be really, you know, the perfect uh, 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 machinery to do because you have to change a boundary structure. But that kind of thing is possible if you enlarge uh, Hilbert space and then see that area change or boundary change is actually a change of the uh, microscopic entanglement structure in the huge HUV space. So you, you do formulate that way, you would probably be able to do uh, a dynamical space time, even superposition. Um, but explicit way to do, I don't know. But this, this direction of idea seems to be consistent with that broad idea. And what using tensor network is probably not enough. I, if you meant the tensor, because I just couldn't hear a dire uh, question, like a tensor and dynamical space time. So I'm guessing the question from those essentially from two words. So if I'm not answering. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank
Sorry, let, let me ask again. So it's possible to say that uh, uh, there is a, a dynamics on the metric. There is a... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's, it's clearly, clearly. If you understand these things, this dynamic uh, metric should show up. Definitely. Okay. Very, very definitely. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's the whole point, like uh, generalizing this argument people doing in this tensor network and so on, in more dynamic space time, in cosmological space time, and metric can be changing, even dynamical, to respond to the matter, small matter, then what you have to do is precisely this one, higher order effect. Okay? So oh, yes. <laughs> if you understand that, then, then you really like responding to matter and then back react and everything. That's a higher order. Yes. So which have, which I have, we have not uh, explicitly done, but we're pretty confident that uh, it will work, at least in next reading order. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Are there further questions from the people online? Um, I have one question. Um, do you understand how to define a partition function on this uh, holographic screen? Because I was just wondering. I mean. Quantum yeah. information uh, quantities are something that appeared much more recently, but in the old days of ADS-CFT, people were computing two-point functions, etc. Oh, yeah. Do you have any function. understanding of that? Correlation uh, function is probably difficult, but the bound on correlation function or something can be given, right? Because of mutual information, because you can you can now compute uh, uh, on entropy, so SA plus SP minus S, that's a bound. But so some of the thing can be done, but uh, like because even degrees of freedom is not completely clear. So that's that's the good thing about TT bar. It's TT bar may not be exactly uh, uh, corresponding to this this thing, but it's very similar. Like you're doing a reshuffling of the bound and degrees of freedom, where uh, then you can compute uh, like through a replica trick, right? So that's that, that's why you could compute uh, uh, entropy in, in the spherical partition function. So you, you can do only in the case of Euclidean version of the spherical competition function as a function of the size. So in the limited case, and a TT by can be in TT by can be done. The question is similar thing can be done just to, from this framework. I, I don't know. I'm not answering very very well to you. That's very, very good. I wanna yeah. I, I probably my feeling is that or I probably thought about it and they didn't make much progress. But yeah, I I, I wanna rethink. Thanks. Yeah, that that that's great. Yeah. Correlation function are kind of dumb because you, you you don't know even what kind of uh, operator you, you want to consider. So. Right. But like more global partition function or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. May make sense. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Oh yeah, thank you. Yes. That's good. Okay, so then if there are no more questions, then let's thank the speaker again. Hey.